You creepy little f I know exactly why you're here. You're here to make those gains that crypto is famous for. Those 10, 20, 30, 50 Xs you heard your sweaty uncle talk about at Thanksgiving yesterday. That's why you're here. And look, as a fellow creepy f I'm gonna tell you the only way to do that is by trading mid and micro cap coins. Those are those ripe little dumpster berry coins to deliver these crazy returns that you're perusing YouTube for. The thing is you need to know how to trade these coins, which is exactly what this video is going to do. This is gonna be the pinnacle of being a crypto piece of This is the video you need. There's no other place you need to go. No video is gonna do it better than this. If you're one of those people who sees all your friends making all this money doing nothing and saying stuff like have fun being poor, the poor people. And you're thinking, wow, I too want to mock poor people. I want to wave my phallic waggly manhood in the face of people that work nine to five jobs and drive around town screaming profanity out my window in my Lamborghini while wearing Balenciaga. Then this video is probably for you because let's face it, you're a horrible person. Who the hell searches anywhere on the internet with a straight face trying to make 50x gains on their bar mitzvah money? You. That's who. This is investing, you absolutely filthy human being. You're like a person who went to an arranged wedding service and you have a wide, wide venue of good, classy, homemaking women. And you say, hey, you know what? This is great, but do you have any girls with a large OnlyFans following? That's kind of what I'm really looking for. You, sir, are the equivalent to that kid in high school who accidentally pooped his pants mid-class. We all know one. But instead of taking the L and sulking off into the shadows, you want to scheme to date the prom queen. You unreasonable, filthy f and the worst part of all of this is I'm the one here who should be the most ashamed because that's exactly what I'm going to give you in this video. In this video, with a straight face, this isn't me exaggerating. I'm, I'm actually just going to get real at this point. I'm going to give you a series of schemes, plays, that I have used in crypto for years to repeatedly turn hundreds of thousands of dollars into many, many millions of dollars in crypto that you can apply to whatever amount you want to invest. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to do this on your own. If you go to other channels or you've looked at even other videos on this channel, I sometimes give examples of coins. I don't want, I don't want you doing that. I don't want you looking at my coins. I don't want you looking at my homework, you little lazy I want you to be able to go off on your own and do this on your own and find little areas or pockets or puddles and be able to spot coins that can 10, 20, 50x and then go do this degenerate disgusting game by yourself. You don't want to be doing this in public. Don't be coming to my channel trying to do it with me. Ew. Go back to your mother's basement. Do it in private. No one wants to see this. But jokes aside, just having a list of coins, getting coins from other people isn't going to work. You need to know how to do this on your own, which is exactly what this video is going to show you. So I'm gonna take the glasses off. I'm gonna stop making fun of you and comparing you to the kid in high school who pooped his pants. Cause that's not you, I hope. Someone actually is watching this video who did poop their pants in high school and is like <laughs> But hopefully that percent of people watching this video is very, very low. So if that's you and you wanna unsubscribe, I totally get it. I think I can take the hit there. But no more joshing around. This, this video is not about joshing, it's about trading mid and micro cap coins. So let me show you how to find these coins because realistically, if we do get a bull run, these things are gonna 10, 20, 50 X again. We're gonna see it. So what I'm gonna do in this video is the first thing I wanna do is explain to you why micro cap and mid cap coins. I wanna explain to you how they work and why you need to be looking here and how this total little filthy, muddy toilet water part of crypto works. I'm then gonna get into actual tactics you can use that have repeatedly worked for me. And then most importantly, at the end of this video, we're gonna talk about how to sell these things because these things are like a, a night out with Magic Johnson. You know, you, it can go really fun. He probably has a lot of money. You can have a lot of fun for a short period of time, but you don't wanna take it all the way. You wanna get the max enjoyment, but get out of there before you commit or you might end up with a long lasting problem because micro cap coins are not meant for holding. This is not traditional investing. We are getting into things before people get into them, before all the hype and FOMO dumps in, and then we are waiting for the hype and FOMO to hit, and then we are dumping these coins. We are not going to hold these forever. These are short term, filthy, filthy moves. And that's what I'm gonna get to at the end of this video. But first, why these coins? Why do we look here? Why do we do this? this filthy little dance. So look, I'm gonna assume you are an untrained monkey at this point. You're just sitting in a cage, you're interested in this, but you're just throwing your poop at walls and you're probably buying Bitcoin. Smart move, no. Look, why do we do mid caps and 
micro cap coins so if you're brand new to this you're probably coming to coin market cap and you're looking at all these coins and i remember when i first got in to crypto you know i bought bitcoin and started going up i'm like wow whoa, 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 i'm in some insider thing here look at me making all the big bucks the point is you're not going to make a lot of money trading these top 10 coins and if you're in crypto you need to understand that you're already taking a huge massive risk okay if we go and buy solano we go and buy bitcoin we go and start buying cardano i'm i don't even have time to talk about cardano in this video and these top coins everybody knows about all these coins right here can eat a nice 70 percent drop for example solano right now a uh, pre-bull if we're about to get a bull is already up like six eight x this thing could easily go back to 12 cents and you could lose 80 90 percent of your investment so first things first if we're going to be in crypto, we deserve to be rewarded if the overall market goes up. And if we are in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, all these things, we're not going to make comical amounts of money. We can make good money. For example, Bitcoin, if we see a full bull, goes to 150,000, yeah, we can make a 5x. If we see Ethereum go to 10,000, we could see a 5x. Same thing with all these coins down right here. The problem with these coins right here is we have to hold so much money in them. For example, if you want to make a lot of money off of 5x, Let's say your net worth is $200,000 and you want to make something that's relevant to your net worth. You're going to have to keep like one fourth of your net worth inside of Bitcoin. You're going to have to keep like 50,000 of that 200,000 there to make any amount of money that's impactful on your net worth. The same applies to these coins right here. Yet you are still taking a massive risk. So the thing you need to understand is if we go and look at Solana right here, it was a mid cap, low cap coin last market. So last market, if you came in and started buying Ethereum, let's let's not even look at Bitcoin because we know the gains on that are just simply not going to be as large as the rest of crypto. Everybody knows that. But if we go and look at Ethereum, for example, because people get into Ethereum and think, oh, I know something other people don't. You're so early, sir. We're so impressed. But if we look at when it started moving, from its bottom right here, it went from $500 to $4,000 right here. So this is a good 8X. Wow, incredible. Cool. That's not going to make you rich. If we look at Solana around that same exact time frame, when it started moving, which was about around here, ETH's initial move was right here. This thing went from $3 all the way up to $40, all the way up to $200. So the thing you need to understand is that mid cap and low cap coins, when they move, they're going to move much, much harder. And if the market keeps going up, you're going to see this consistently across a lot of these lower to mid cap coins. Therefore, if you're going to take the risk, you might as well take the risk in coins that are going to do these multiples. Also, just to throw this in, there are so many things happening in the market. It's changing all the time. I'm not going to have time to make updates and I rarely make these videos, maybe once a week tops. If you want to see faster updates and news on the market, follow me at ZSS Becker on Twitter. That's where I'm going to be posting updates. That's where you see things happening way faster, things I'm looking at way faster. And if you actually like me and want to see pictures of my food and my dog, follow me at 4 a.m. Becker on Instagram. And the second thing you need to understand is that while Bitcoin's going up, it gives the entire room breathing room. So if Bitcoin keeps moving up and trending up, we're not going to see these coins take cataclysmic dumps rapidly that people think they're going to do. People always say don't get into mid cap and micro caps because they're going to dump on you out of nowhere. Yes, they 100% do when the market's over. If you look at this time period right here when Bitcoin is charging like an animal and trending upwards, the entire market starts to have breathing room in this period. That means the drops we're going to see on these coins, while they can be significant, they're not going to be cataclysmic like we see in the bear markets when they occur. Yes, these coins go down 90%. Pa pow, we can see it right here. But you can see while Bitcoin was making its moves, these things just trended upwards. So your risk is roughly the same as being in Ethereum. You can see Ethereum went down. We went from $4,000 to $1,000, 75%, we can see Solana right here went from $258 all the way to $12, which was 95%. At this point, in my opinion, a 75% loss and a 99% loss, who cares? Once you're down 75%, you're already 
fucked, okay? No one goes to Thanksgiving dinner and they're like, hey, hey, I'm only down 75% instead of 99%. No, you're just screwed at that point. You made a terrible mistake. There's no winners after you're down 40% plus. And you're gonna get that in any coin. So if we're gonna get hosed if we lose, no matter what, we might as well take the bet that pays the highest dividends. And this is why we trade micro and mid caps. Now, before we get into any more, please read this disclaimer. This is incredibly risky especially with the current macro environment. There is like an 80% chance what I'm talking about in this video will not work. If you are trying this for the first time, I can almost guarantee you will lose money. You will probably lose a lot of money if you put a lot of money in. This is incredibly risky. This is not financial advice in any way, shape, or form. This has far more relation to going in sports betting and gambling in Vegas than it does investing. And this is just a video talking about how it works and what works for me. This is not me advising you to do this in any shape or form. So now we understand why let's get into the what specifically the tactics so the first thing you're probably thinking as I lay this out like ouch this is great but how do we go and pick the coins that are going to do this and so when I first got into crypto I thought it was based on oh, the technology and we, if I can just go in here and dig around and start finding coins that nobody knows about and this technology is really going to take over the world I'm going to get inside edge the thing you need to understand about crypto is, yes, I do think there's a lot of future potential here for the technology. At the moment, we are watching nothing but essentially Ponzi schemes. These, these don't do anything. None of these coins right here, no one uses them for anything consistently in the mainstream. A lot of these coins will never be used, never do anything. So, frankly, what are we actually trading here? We are trading stories and narratives. We are trading bar none what people think about these coins. And what people think about these coins is how much they think they're going to pump, how much money they think they're gonna make on these coins, how likely it is they think they're gonna be able to sell it to someone else for hire. That's what we're trading here. because these are not businesses making money. There are no dividends being paid out here. There's no way to sneak into something and it gets a ton of customers and you start getting really high dividends that drive the stock price up. These are things that generate no revenue and are based purely on opinion. So knowing this, if we're trading stories and narratives, when we go around here, you're going to see this big chart of all these of all these coins. And you're going to think, how do I know what is going to pump next? Where is the gains going to be at? That seems very difficult, doesn't it? Because there's thousands of coins on here. We got Poo Poo coin. We got, we got Come In You coin. We got Dog coin. We got Gorilla coin. We got Neo coin. We got any word in the English language you've ever thought of. We got a coin for it. How do we know which ones are going to pump? Here is how. The human brain cannot sit here and understand all these coins. There is no such thing as a crypto expert that understands what's going on across 100 coins and is able to find the perfect coin every single time. That doesn't happen. That is what a loser in crypto does. That is what a person who doesn't make any money doing this does. And at the end of it, they end up with 100 different coins across 100 different niches. They're not able to keep track of it. And then the market crashes and they all tank and then they lose all their money. You can try that. You can go for it. I've done that before. It doesn't work. What you wanna do is you have to realize that you are simple. So instead of trying to go and catch every single coin movement and know exactly what's going on across all of crypto, what we're instead gonna do is we're gonna focus on specific niches. We're gonna niche down our focus so that we see only one area and we're able to watch that area like a hawk. Because what is not possible is understanding every single narrative going on in crypto at once. You can deeply understand the narrative of one sector of crypto, one area of crypto that's happening at any given time. And as I'm editing this, just to throw it in, you don't need to catch more than one narrative. If you nail just one narrative, you can generate 20, 50, 100 Xs over the course of a bull run just watching that one area. You're not rewarded for being in 20 different niches. You are rewarded for mastering one. So let me explain this. The mid cap and micro areas that I trade is all gaming. One of the reasons for this is I think gaming is going to have the strongest narrative coming up here in 2024, 2025. I think it's going to give the best returns. I also understand gaming. I used to make video games for fun. I played a lot of video games. I understand the marketing behind it. This is why I watch here because I can use that edge for myself. I really don't trade anything else in crypto. I used to do that last bull run. I made meh gains during it. During the gaming bull run last bull run, I made insane gains in gaming crypto, generating millions and millions and millions of dollars from generally low capital investments. And so it is completely possible for me to look at this entire niche right here and understand everything that's going on. I can look at all these coins right here and give you a pretty good uh, story or understanding of what's happening with them. Also, when new coins hit the market, I understand when they hit the market. I see them come in because I'm watching this like a hawk. 
And so it's very easy for me to look at coins, look at their narratives, look at things that are going on and say, oh, okay, this narrative's coming up. This coin's probably going to move or this narrative is starting to play out. It's probably time to sell this coin. I can also look at the smaller coins in the market that are way down here in gaming, these tiny coins right here, and I can go and actually recognize coins that have good projects or good founders or good things going on in them. This gives me a huge, massive edge. So lesson number one is refine your focus to one area of crypto. For example, you could simply be a Solana master. You could just look at every coin in the Solana ecosystem and only look at that. For example, one place I had a lot of success last bull run, I'm kind of out of joking mood right now. I'm in straight teaching mode, so I'm just not gonna pick on Cardano this video, I'm sorry. But one way I made a lot of money last bull run was not by just trading Cardano, but what I did is I traded the ecosystem underneath it. It got super hypey. So for example, if we look at Cardano right here, it pumped up the $3, yeah, 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 yeah. But if we go look at a launch pad under Cardano, please don't buy this just because I'm mentioning it. Someone, people did this last video. I mentioned this as like a dead coin last video and people went nuts and started buying it. Don't, that's so stupid, don't do that. If you see me mention any coins in this video, please do not buy them. People are just gonna front run you and dump on you. I know if you're new to crypto and you see these coins starting to move up, you go, oh man, I have an insider edge by watching these videos and buying the, the coin after the video. No, you don't. You're just gonna get dumped on. Don't do that. So if we look though, Cardstarter during this time frame delivered way better gains than Cardano did. So by mastering the Cardano ecosystem, I was able to easily spot this coin coming on the market and grab into it very early right here and make a ton of money. I made a ton of money on Cardstarter. Backing up, I'm gonna be talking about gaming a lot in this because this is a market that I understand very well and can make a lot of examples in. But I suggest you gravitate towards what you're interested in. For example, there's AI sections of the market, there's individual coins, there's sections of the market that are insurance, whatever. Now, the thing I wanna point out right here is when you find these corners of the market, you don't need to necessarily be super creative at this point if you're watching this video at the time that I made it because we are likely either still in a bear market, sort of, or we're right before a bull. A lot of the top 10 coins right here, if we find them outside of the, the initial top 10, top 25, are still gonna see crazy gains. So for example, if we go look at the top game in, coin in gaming, IMX, this thing is still literally an 8X from all time high, okay? If we go down just a little bit more and we look at something like Alluvium, which I think is gonna run super hard this run, this thing is still literally an 18X from its all time high. We don't have to get super creative this early in the run. The, the deeper in a run we get, the more creative we're going to have to be. Lucky for you, you're here nice and early if we're about to get a bull run. So we don't have to be like, oh my God, oh my God, go down to like dumpster tier number five and find stuff that is like so low that it doesn't even have a market cap. We don't have to do that, okay? Put your pants back on. Before we start trading these little coins right here, you need to understand the next thing that goes on in crypto. And this is the rotation effect. So if we go look at the top coins right here, you need to understand that the way investments work in crypto is, Money rolls in the Bitcoin. It will then roll into Ethereum and these, these top five coins right here, mostly Solana and Ethereum right now. Then it rolls into every coin below here and it works its way down to the smaller coins. Why? Because people make money in Bitcoin. Then what they do is they take that money that they made and they gamble a little bit more in Solana and these other coins right here. And the people that make money in Solana and all these coins right here, then take it down lower. Because what crypto is, is it's like a series of elevators that keep going up. Bitcoin goes up and then people can't make any more money right here. So they hop down to the next elevator and this elevator starts to go up and they make money there. And then they hop down to the next elevator. And so when you're trading mid caps and micro caps, this little dance goes on about three to four times before people get to mid caps and micro caps. So that allows you to somewhat kind of front run it. This is a huge, massive edge. It's extremely hard to front run these moves right here because you it's, almost impossible to predict whether Bitcoin's gonna go up or down. They're, they're the first people to know and the first people to lose. So why try to do that? If Bitcoin rockets up, you can almost guaranteed bet that within a day or two, Ethereum's gonna rocket up. And then within maybe a week or two, mid cap and micro caps are gonna rocket up. Almost every single time in a bull run. You're gonna see this over and over and over again. And then when people make all their money in the micro caps, they dump all of them really quickly. And we see a, a lot of liquidity get sucked out of micro caps and then roll back in the Bitcoin. 
And this cycle goes on and on and on and over and over again throughout crypto with everything steadily getting higher. So for example, you can see this rotation happening many, many times in Solana right here during the bull run. You can see this first one, it goes up, kind of cools off, goes up, big dip, goes up, big dip, goes up, big dip, okay? And so this looks like only a set of like this rotation happening three times. You can see it happening multiple times right here. Okay, you can see these constant up and downs, up and downs, up and downs right there. So understand that's what we're doing. When we start to see Ethereum start to move particularly, and especially Solana and the smaller coins in the top 10, we need to go and start positioning into the mid and micro caps. And also, if we start to see Bitcoin or Ethereum start to crash before the money rolls to the mid caps, we need to pull out of those pretty quickly because the next place that money goes after Bitcoin and Ethereum start to crash is the micro caps. Usually people start selling their Bitcoin and Ethereum first because that's their largest holdings. They sell their micro caps last. And just a quick edit, what you're gonna see a lot of times is you're gonna see Bitcoin peak out like this and you're gonna see Ethereum peak out like this and then you're gonna see micro caps pet peak out like this. So a lot of times in the market, you're gonna see the top of mid and micro caps maybe about a month after the top of Bitcoin. You've seen this in every single market because people, Bitcoin goes down and this is the final one, and but people are still in the casino gambling and then they get cat with their pants off right here. So understand this is how it works. The, the dumps in micro caps, people think, oh, micro caps are holding up. Well, you're gonna see this so many times when Bitcoin dumps, you're gonna, people are gonna say, oh, the micro caps or mid caps, they're holding up great compared to Bitcoin. And then <laughs> that's exactly what's gonna happen. If you see someone say that exact text on Twitter, sell your house, sell everything, go hide in a, 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 a basement somewhere, a nuke's about to hit. Next, you have to understand coins move in relation to each other because again, we're trading stories. And what people do is when they see a story go up, they say, okay, what story is similar? There's another elevator I can hop onto because people never want to buy the coin when it's up here. They want to buy the next coin based on what they just saw right here. So for example, in gaming, last bull run, people saw Axie Infinity go absolutely nuclear. So what people did is instead of buying, it kept going up the entire way, it started moving and moving and moving and moving, moving very highly. What people did instead is to say, okay, cool, that's awesome. Where's that gonna happen next? They said, okay, Alluvium. So instead of buying Axie, you should have bought Alluvium. And perhaps the biggest lesson I want you to take away from this video is a lot of people watch a single coin. They'll see a chart of a coin and they just watch that coin and they try to draw conclusions by watching that coin or they try to draw conclusions by finding a coin early and just watching it. What you're gonna see in crypto, unlike some other markets, is that you can draw conclusions about coins by looking at other coins. So if a coin like this is doing nothing, we can draw a conclusion about this coin by looking at this coin, because people take stories from this coin and we have to think to ourselves, what lesson are they taking away from this? What are people gonna think when this coin is shot up? What are they going to think about the market? What's the interpretation they're gonna draw? And if we can use that, that's how we can get in right here before it does this. This is how we beat people in crypto. We don't look at one coin, we look at multiple sets of coins and we try to guess the conclusions people are going to have from those coins. Or what you're gonna routinely see me do is I know people have the same set of data from last market. I know that they're watching other coins or big coins in the market, for example, like AVAX. Okay. And so knowing that everybody has the same info and then knowing it, that people are seeing the same info I'm seeing, what we want to do is we want to predict what people are going to use and the conclusions they're going to draw from that info. So for example, when a lot of the tactics I'm going to show you right here, it's based on knowing that people have the data from last market and they're going to predictively do these things. They're going to reach these conclusions and we can beat them to these conclusions before they even have them. This is the huge edge. This is how you trade mid caps and micro caps because it's not unpredictable. People aren't just randomly buying coins for giggles. They do sometimes do that with meme coins. But for the most part, what is happening is something happened in the market last bull run or recently in the run, and then people are using that to create a story in their head or a narrative about where it's gonna happen next. If we can think like they're thinking, and then we can just say, oh, okay, well, they're doing this little process right here. We come and then we wait for them, and then we just sell them our bags. That's what we wanna do. This is how we win. And so that's the next lesson you gotta understand right there. Coins 
move based on each other. When, when people see a coin start to take off, they go, what's next? Also, just to throw this in, there are so many things happening in the market, it's changing all the time. I'm not gonna have time to make updates and I rarely make these videos, maybe once a week tops. If you wanna see faster updates and news on the market, follow me at ZSS Becker on Twitter. That's where I'm gonna be posting updates. That's where you see things happening way faster, things I'm looking at way faster. And if you actually like me and wanna see pictures of my food and my dog, follow me at 4am Becker on Instagram. Okay. So the next thing you also wanna do when you get into your niche is you wanna see which coins are the Bitcoins of the niche, which are the most established coins, because all the coins in the niche are gonna move based on these coins. So for example, IMX is an infrastructure play. Beam is an infrastructure play. Miria is an infrastructure play. When we start to see IMX pumping really, really, really hard, what people are going to say is, okay, gaming infrastructure is pumping. Where is the next pump going to be? They're going to go to Beam. When Beam is done pumping, what they're going to do is say, where's the next infrastructure going to be? They're going to go all the way down to a coin like Miria. And that's going to repeat right there. We have these little sub cycles always going on in coins. They all move based on each other. So think of it like this. What is the grandpa coin of the niche? IMX is the grandpa coin. It's a big one. So that brings us into the actual tactics themselves. You understand the general principles of what we're doing here. So now to the tactics themselves. I like to call this first one, when the grandpa moves. So based on your understanding of that, there is, there's Bitcoin coins in every single niche. There's a, there's a leading indicator coin. I like to call it the grandpa. So for example, IMX is an infrastructure play. We've already kind of talked about the scenario, but I really want to break down this, this in detail. So IMX is an infrastructure play. This is the grandpa coin, okay? Uh, when it comes to gaming, for example, I, Immutable is going to be the infrastructure gaming grandpa coin. Sandbox and Axie are gonna be the grandpa gaming coin. When the grandpa moves, you know the father's gonna move, the smaller infrastructure coin, which is probably gonna be Beam. Now when Beam moves, we know the sun is gonna move, which is probably gonna be something like Miria. Now, if the sun is moving, where's the unborn baby at? Where's the unborn baby at? Where is the coin that is similar to these three coins we just mentioned in because, but is tiny, but is tiny. Now I'm not gonna give you that coin because I haven't even researched that far down yet because we don't have to be that creative yet in the market. We don't have to be dumpster diving yet. But once the market is really picking up, what people are gonna do is when we see the sun coin move, the smaller but relevant coin, what people are gonna do is gonna say, where's the next Miria? And they're gonna come down here and they're gonna find something that's an infrastructure play and then they're gonna throw it into that. The thing's gonna be at a million dollar market cap and they're gonna throw into that and it's gonna to jump to a $10 million market cap super quickly. Pow, you just made a 10X by using this grandpa to unborn baby move. For example, last run, Immutable had a big NFT narrative going. There was a huge NFT gaming narrative going on. I said, okay. And this was a sun coin back then. It was, it was a smaller coin. So I said, what's going to move next? What has that NFT narrative? Back then, that was Altura. This one still has a really strong narrative, but it's more in the, the beam territory at this point. So I was able to catch this coin at this market cap right here. And we rode this all the way up. I think we saw a good 30X on this coin using this tactic. That's why it's powerful. I, I said, okay, this coin is at 50, $100 million market cap. Where is the next coin that has this narrative? Now, the next thing that's gonna work really well this market is what I like to call the old hero veteran tactic. So what people are not understanding, and this is, this is perfectly personified by Alluvium, but people have really picked up on Alluvium right here. So during the bull run, there's these things called diluted market caps. And what this basically means is that a lot of the coins that investors got when the coin launched were locked up. So let's imagine you have 10% of the coins are available. We have a million coins and only 100,000 are available to buy by the general market. And then there's 900,000 coins that investors bought beforehand, but they can't sell yet through vesting. So what's going to happen when those coins get unlocked? They're going to sell those coins and it's going to smash the price down as not only supply comes in the market, but people are also selling very rapidly. This is what happened to Alluvium right here. However, you have to understand this crushed Alluvium all the way down. And this happened to a lot of coins that launched last market, a lot, a lot of coins. And you can see they just, it, it looked like it died right here. But Alluvium was always coming back for this one reason. One, a project that survived the entire bear market 
and still has money in their account, that's a strong project with really smart battle-hardened founders. That's exactly what you want. They know how the market works. They know what makes it go up and down. They know how to market. And they likely have a proc they actually believe in if they're still around. That's one of the biggest reasons you want to look for these coins right here. The other reason, though, is because everybody remembers Alluvium. The second people rush back into gaming, and Alluvium is a great game. I know the founders. I'm a day one investor in Alluvium. That all aside, let's get back to the narrative and the pumpamentals, because I'm purely talking about market speculation right here. I'm not talking about the quality of games or the quality of project. I'm talking about what people are going to think. Everybody remembered Alluvium. The first place they went when gaming started to get hot again and I know this looks like it's completely dead, but it's not. Alluvium is one of the best performing coins recently. Went from 40 bucks all the way up to 100 bucks. Is that the second people got back in the gaming, they instantly remembered the brand name Alluvium. This is why we want to remember and look at these coins. Because when people start rushing back in, especially if we get a full bowl, the first place they're going to go is go, oh, what, what coins can I get into? What coins can I get into? And they're going to remember this dude right here. They're going to remember the big brand name that was established right here. The marketing's already done. This is the first place they're going to go. So I try to look for battle-hardened teams that have survived the bear and have that big brand name. Now, there isn't too many examples of this in gaming at this point in time. There are tons and tons of examples of this in main big cap coins. So, for example... Last bull run, XRP isn't the best example because they got on that lawsuit, but you can see they went absolutely nuclear in 2017. Absolutely nuclear. And then they died. And then what did people do the second the bull run actually started? Um, or actually, you can see here's 2017. The second the bull run actually started again, before they got put in court and sued, the first place people rotated back into XRP. Okay? So understand this right here. Old big brand names are going to get that revival. And if we are pre-bull like we are right now, we're going to see that. So one coin that I think has a giant really good chance of this, just an example of what to look for, is like Super right here. Super had huge valuation. It kind of suffered from the diluted market cap problem I just pointed out. Went, went down, 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 down. But now I have a super duper battle hard team that has all the marketing, has top influences on board of it. This is something that's going to get attention in the bull run. And you can see it no longer has that giant diluted market cap. You're going to see a lot of projects, which I'm not going to pick on right now because I don't like to pick projects that are going to dump. But they're going to have like a $100 million market cap undiluted. And then they have like a $3 billion market cap. That means 95% of the coins are locked up and prone to be sold the second investors come in the scene. Now, that's not always a death sentence. Okay, for example, we saw Alluvium absolutely crush it in this situation, but you need to know when those unlocks and everything are going to appear, and that's that's a conversation for another video. So it's not saying that coins that have a high diluted market cap are not going to perform. I'm saying that is a huge advantage for a project to not have that problem anymore. You can see Alluvium's market cap to diluted is not nearly what it used to be, giving it a huge edge in this bull run. Now, the next tactic that works really, really well is the combo method so you want to find a hot chain that has a hot narrative and then the hot projects on that chain because they all work together to create this whirlpool effect a really good example like that is again cardano when you saw cardano being super hot back in the 2020 bull run so if we go all the way back and look at when cardano actually made money you can see in this time frame up here leading up to may it went from 30 cents all the way to a dollar 50 or $2 even at, the, at this peak right here. We're going to ignore this, this bump right here. So Cardano got really hot at this time. Everybody was talking about Cardano, how it's going to take on Ethereum, all that kind of stuff. It was all over the place. So the last thing you want to actually do at this point in time is invest on Cardano, particularly when it's done being hot right here. You can see this huge climb up right here. You're really not going to make much money after this huge boom. What you want to do instead, is say what projects are coming out that are going to ride this narrative because they always happen. So you can see right about the tail end of that Cardano pump, we saw projects like Cardstarter or other Cardano projects or uh, Sunday Swap, I think was one of the Cardano swapping protocols back then. These went insane. This thing went from, you can't even see where it started at. I think it started like 10 cents and it went all the way to like 50 bucks. So if you put in a thousand bucks right there, I think I don't even want to do the multiples on that. It's insane amounts of money. So the last place you want to really be looking at is the hot leader coin. You want to look at the new coins or the small coins are going to go nuts. So for example, when you say AVAX pump, AVAX caught a really hot hand in 
the last bull run. So if you look at when AVOX got really hot around September, I can guarantee you around that time frame, the trading decks for it around September, look at that, when Joe launched, the trading decks launched, and went absolutely nuts. The market cap was huge on this thing when it launched, $500 million from nothing, zero to $500 million market cap because AVAX had the hot end. So you want to use these combos, find the hot chain and find the ecosystems underneath them. So for example, what I'm doing in gaming is I think AVAX is gonna have an extremely strong gaming narrative, this Bruin. I think it's gonna take off and it's gonna go nuts. But we can see AVAX is going nuts right here. And then what's happening is we're gonna see the projects underneath it, like Beam that's on AVAX. These are starting to go nuts. You can see as soon as AVAX started going nuts, people go, oh, Beam. And then what they do, once Beam starts to move, we use that, uh, grandfather tactic again is they go and find projects underneath it like shrapnel that's on AVAX and then pow. So we use the combination. We find a hot chain or a hot narrative that's picking up in all of crypto and then find the sub assets underneath it. And we can again use that grandfather unborn baby tactic. We talked about what am I saying? The names of these tactics are getting insane, but we can use that tactic again to find the sub coin of the sub coin. It's powerful, it works. And this again is why it's so important to know a niche. For example, let's say uh, a low level altcoin like Harmony One, a layer one like that starts to move. Instantly in gaming, I can tell you which projects are on Harmony One or I can find them very, very, very lightning quick. And when this thing starts to move right here, I'm gonna have probably two one, two, five days tops before these start to move. There's always a lag period between this, whether it's hours or days. And in the crypto markets, this is why it's so important that you have all your research done. You know a market, uh, a sector of the market way better than anybody else. And so instantly when this moves, you have the answer. You can fire back immediately and beat everybody. So the final tactic I'm gonna share with you is again, looking at fundamentals of coins in these hot narrative and niches. So again, you have to know the niche really, really, really well. You have to know it super duper well to do this last one. So what I was looking for last bull run, Altura was one of the better hands that we played right here. The NFT niche and the gaming niche was picking up super hot. Altura is a coin that has a lot to do with NFTs and gaming. And so what I tried to do is I tried to find the projects that were getting a lot of adoption and games were actually using them, but no one was buying the coin. Because again, people don't buy coins in crypto because a project is working. They buy it because they think it's hot and they think they can dump it on someone for more. The point of a, or a technology working and actually getting adoption has nothing to do with why people buy coins until they figure out it is. And then they think, oh, and then they tell themselves a story about why they can dump it on someone for more. And then they FOMO into it. This is what happened with Altura. We grabbed it about right here and I noticed that the coin was getting picked up by a lot of games. And I said, oh crap, this thing's at like a two, $3 million market cap. It's getting a lot of adoption. I'm gonna hop in. I hopped in slowly after when the narrative picked up, we saw money start to rotate down. People stumbled upon this coin. It went absolutely nuts. And then this time period right here, then we saw all the influencers, all the people on Twitter, everybody started talking about it and it exploded. So to really narrow this down, we're not just looking at technology and hidden adoption. What we wanna do is look at the hot narrative first. What narrative is going on here? What is What are people freaking out about? At the time, it was NFTs, okay? And when uh, another example of this, NFTs were really hot and Cardano was hot. So guess what? Everything related to NFTs on Cardano was going nuts. Okay, but then gaming got hot in the same way Cardano did. So I had to think to myself, we got this hot narrative. Gaming is hot. The technology and adoption aren't just enough. I'm going to guess when people move into this marketplace, which is going to be gaming NFTs, this is where they're going to roll. This is my prediction. What coin are they going to pick? All right, when all these little goblins roll in here in two to three days, what coin, when they do their research, are they going to pick? It's going to be the one with the fundamentals because they all think they're buying technology and whatnot. And I, I love Altura, for example. I'm not pooping on any coin I mentioned in this video, but I'm pooping on these people, all right? They move to the hot narrative, they get done with Cardano, they start to get done with this orgy porgy over here, and they roll over, frothing at the mouth, and go, gaming, gaming NFTs. And they go and dig through everything, rip through the trash pile, trying to beat each other, and they're gonna find the coin that has the best story. 
you find that coin. So you have to look at the narratives and you have to predict what these goblins are going to do and what they're going to think. And then the fundamentals come in because the goblins are idiots and they think everything trades by technology and fundamentals and whatnot. It doesn't. It trades by their idiotic behavior. So you have to know the goblin and what they're going to think. You find the coin that matches the narrative that the goblins like and then they all jump into it. And then they're going to drive the coin to the moon past any point of realistic expectations or uh, pricing or valuation. Because they don't care. It's not based on technology. It's based on their greedy little grubby hands. That's about that tactic summed up right there. You just have to really know a niche to do this last one. It's probably one of the most powerful ones, but you're not going to do it until you really know a niche and you're only focused on one place. I would not have discovered this if I was in... 18 different niches, looking at DEXs, looking at multiple chains. I just It just wouldn't have happened. So finally, we can also use Altura again to start talking about how I start to sell these coins. So the first thing you need to understand is that while we don't trade Bitcoin, it's extremely important to keep your eye on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Why? Because Bitcoin and Ethereum <coughs> are like the weather of crypto. If it's sunny out, people are going to be coming to the beach. And they're going to be playing. It's going to give crypto breathing room. To put this even in in, in dumber terms, while those things are going up, everything in the market is going to slowly be going up or bouncing up. The more Bitcoin and Ethereum, the better they're doing, the better the rest of the market is going to do. You're not going to see the market doing well when Ethereum and Bitcoin are dumping. You're just not. And so they're like the weather. And so while the weather's good, you want to be playing and you want to be at the beach and you can expect people to be at the beach when these things go down you can expect people to flee the beach it's always 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 going to work like that now in a bull run what you're going to see and this is this is the real challenge of a bull run if we go back and look at every bull run 2017 2020 i'm going to look at the 2020 bull run because uh that's what i know best but you can see this run right here on the way up, these look small, but you see multiple 30% dips. So, for example, right here, we went from 8,000 to 6,000 or 5,000, okay? And this is the COVID dip right here. But along the way, you can see we take multiple 10% dips. And then we had our first big dip right here, about 36,000, all the way to like 32,000. All right, so we're seeing these good 20% dips repeatedly in a bull run. And what a bull run is, is the cycle of these dips. We're going to constantly see it go up, 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 then chase down. Up, 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 then chase down. Up, 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 and then chase down. And in a bull run that happens over a period of years, you have about four or five of these cycles. And then it goes down. And so first off, you need to be prepared for these. You don't need to sell all your coins every single dip. But once we get to a certain point of a bull run where we've seen two or three of these, the last one or the next one you see could possibly be the last one. So usually in a bull run, you don't want to sell the first major dip. You don't want to sell the second major dip. But after that, things are going to start to get hairy, particularly when Bitcoin crosses, in my opinion, it's old all time high. All right. As soon as we cross 60,000, we're really in no man's land where things can reverse and go back to hell super quickly. So knowing this, the way I play these coins is I, I just don't F around. If you go and look at someone in Vegas, the people that have the biggest wins are the people that double down after every roulette win. They also have the biggest losses. They never leave with their money. So you have to be comfortable in mid caps and micro caps rotating out of these things and not going for the biggest return. So for example, with Altura, we were really late in the bull run. So the first time I saw it go from right here to right here, I took 50% profits on that. Then it went from here to right here. I took 50% profits on that. Then it went from here to right here. I took 50% profits on that. Then it started dumping back down. I took the final amount of profits I had left in the thing. So I didn't try to time the top on any of these. I just take profits in the way up. Because the way I'm looking for it is in these micro caps, yes, you will make the biggest gains if you can just pick a coin like this and hold all the way to the top. No one does that. And then what happens when you have that mythology and you never sell the dips and you never sell the pumps, is you hold all the way back to zero. Every time. This, I have people and friends that made 50, $100 million in the barn. They lost all of it. I got better returns than most people I know that got way further up to me just because I took profits consistently in a nice, boring way. And so what we want to do is we want to treat mid caps and micro caps just like elevators. When one gets really high, every time it really it goes up a whole lot, we want to, every time it goes up a whole lot, we want to take 30 to 50% profits all the way to the top. 
Is this going to get us maximum gains? No. But what we then do is we look for smaller caps. And then we go into these while keeping money on the side. And we just keep repeating this pattern as much as we can. The reason why I prefer this, even though this is not going to get you the largest gains, is because eventually one of these Bitcoin dips ends up being the last dip. And then you're just done. And you're toast. So Bitcoin tanked right here and then it just never came back. And anybody that had their money in, they just lost their money. And it's really hard to time this. You're not going to time the top of the market. You can, but you're not. So what we want to do is we keep doing this elevator method. Let's say we put in $5,000 right here and we turn it into $50,000 right here. We go and start down here and then we put 10 or 15 in on the smaller cap coins. We turn that into 100. Okay. Then we start rolling back in with 30 or 50. And we just keep doing this over and over again. And you can do this a lot of times because it happens very rapidly. And so this allows us, we start the bull run. Let's imagine we, we start the bull run at uh, maybe $100,000 total net worth. We put in 5% of our net worth right here. We repeat this process, but in the bull run, we've two or three X our net worth. That is insanely good. Okay. I want to stress right here, the goal of these micro caps, if you're not crushing it right now in life, if your net worth is like 20,000 bucks, you're not going to be a millionaire by the end of this bull run. It is possible for you to leave with a hundred thousand bucks net worth. That's, that's possible. But if you're going for a 20 X or something of your net worth, you you're probably not going to get it. And you're going to hold too hard. Even if you do get to that point, you're going to hold way too damn hard. And this is going to force you to be out of position. If you're going for a good two the five X on your net worth, as your net worth is higher, this should be smaller. For example, if I double my net worth, that's insane, this bull run. If your net worth is $500, 10Xing it to $5,000 isn't extremely unreasonable. This is how we need to look at this though. And so by playing this game right here, it allows us to really keep our dick out of the pencil sharpener and never have to make these big giant bets. If we're wrong right here in the bull run and you lose $5,000 of your $100,000 net worth, you're just fine. You're fine. Okay. If we play this right here, every time we're in and out, say we only put 50 K back on the table right here, we still walk with a 50% gain on our net worth. And so we still leave when, or leave the casino big. This is how we want to look at it. This really stops us from eating those huge, crazy losses that people talk about and you see all the time in crypto. And a lot of times, this allows us to accidentally time the top because we're always selling all the way up and always rotating back in. So on a few coins in the final rotation, you actually are going to probably time the top, not because you perfectly time it, it's because you're always selling. Now, that also being said, when we're going through this, in this bull, if we do get a bull, we're on the first run up right now. We're probably going to see a dip. You probably don't need to dump all your bags on this dip if it comes up. I'm certainly not. We've, I think we might have already witnessed it a little bit with the Binance thing. But on the second dip, we're going to go up and then it's going to take down again. I'm probably not going to sell any coins on this dip. I'm probably not going to sell any coins right here because we're still really early. After this and after Bitcoin breaks 60K, I'm going to probably be aggressively selling. That hasn't happened yet. We still have ways to go and we still have so many multiples on the way right here. After 60K, this is when that aggressive selling pattern is going to come into play because we don't know what's going to happen right there. Let's just leave the casino up. Now, finally, the last thing I want to talk about on these coins that you need to be aware of is the more money you make, the more liquidity issues you're going to run into. So for example, a coin that has a $1 million market cap, you can't move in 50K into it. Okay, So you're going to have to really be splitting across a lot of coins when you're trading these things especially the smaller ones. So for example, when I got into Altura right here, if I put in $30,000, $50,000, I'd probably have to lose about $5,000 in slippage because there's just not enough liquidity of the coin to buy that much. And so it's important again that you know and are able to spread your bags across the niche. This is why I'm in AVEX. This is why I'm in IMX. This is why I'm in BEAM. This is why I'm in MIRI. And I'm going to spread across four different coins. You're thinking, why not just put it all on one coin? That is why. You can't just find one of these smaller coins and dump fifty, hundred thousand dollars in it and then 500 exit. And again, if that does 500 exit, the liquidity is going to be insane. For example, if you're one of the early investors in SHIB, yeah, you got up a billion dollars, but if you sold that billion dollars worth of coins, you could probably only leave with 300, 
300, 200, maybe even $100 million. I don't know what the slippage was then, but I know and heard it was very bad. So the more you get up, get up on these coins, the bigger the bag you have of them, you start running into those liquidity issues. And I just wanted to point that out. So huh, huh, that was a long video. That's it. That is exactly everything I think and do in microcaps. This has worked for me over and over and over and over again. I wanted to share it with you. That's all I got. If you want updates, faster news and stuff that's happening in market, follow me on Twitter at ZSS Becker.